Hi everyone. Yep, everyone knows what these are. A transmitter and a receiver. So these are 433 MHz transmitter and receiver and um, they're extremely cheap on eBay. You can get them very, very cheap imported from China and um, eBay is full of them. They're, these are readily available and they're extremely common. So um, I've done a video on this in the past and the video was very, very popular and it was hugely successful really. But I mean back then I had less knowledge, I had less equipment and the videos were less quality. So I'm hoping to improve on that and uh, hopefully uh, give you some you know, more concise info, uh, get it done quicker and with a better quality video. So here we go, this is how to use the modules with Arduino. So to start with I'll zoom out and there's something very important which you can see that is different with my transmitter and receiver than probably what you've got from eBay. And that is of course, there's a big blue wire on here. So why have I got a big blue wire? Well these two modules um, by default they're okay, right? They're okay. They're not particularly great. I mean if you have them a few meters apart sometimes you won't get any um, any transmission or reception or whatever and sometimes you will. It's kind of sporadic um, and you know like I said they're okay. They're not, they're not particularly great. Um, however if you get some single core wire like this and simply uh, solder it on to act as an antenna, you will find that the quality of reception is much, much, much better. So to start with, that's what I recommend you do, okay? Now you can get these helical antennas, you can buy them off eBay, very cheap, 433 MHz helical antennas, but they're not very good. I've tested them and they're not very good. It's cheaper and better, in my opinion, to just make your own. So like I said, this is single core wire, it's just thin wire, although the diameter doesn't matter too much. Now the size matters, so it's got to be um, 173 millimeters long, and that is from the end here to the PCB. Okay, so obviously mine's probably 175 mil or something like that, but you want 173 mil to stick out from the antenna. So bury two mil into the um, into the PCB. So if I just show you that there, you can probably see what I mean. I've trimmed it off there. So 173 millimeters. If you do that um, and you get it precise, you'll have a much better range and uh, in fact quality with your transmitter and receiver. And of course I've done it on both. This one is 173 mil as well, as you can see there. So that's the first thing I recommend you do. Anyway, so now we're gonna go on to a uh, bit more info about these and then how to wire them up and how to code. So let's have a quick look at them. So you can see that it says there the label is FS1000A 2008-8. So I assume it was made in 2008. Um, so let's have a look. We've got ant for antenna. Um, we've got a crystal it looks like and, um, and two coils. And the label says ground, VCC and ATAD. And I've, I've worked out that ATAD actually means data because it's data backwards. So we've got ground, VCC, data. Let's have a look at the back. Like you see, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not amazing quality. It's, it's pretty poor. But you know, if it works, it works. So it says designator eleven comment designator ID comment. So that's you know, it's not great quality. But anyway, so these are four hundred and thirty-three megahertz, and um, they are five to twelve volt devices, and apparently they go from twenty to two hundred meters. Uh, distance. So this 5 to 12 volts, to be quite honest with you, uh, they're 5 volts. If you give it 12 volts, in my experience, it just doesn't work. You're better off sticking to 5 volts. They're really 5 volt devices. Uh, I don't know exactly why that's the case, but whenever I've tried to go over 5 volts, it just doesn't really work properly. Um, so, yeah, here's the receiver. The back of it looks a little bit better quality, to be fair and um, we can see a chip here which is probably what's that LM358 I think that's an amplifier chip um, well I'd have to check we've got a coil, a resistor um, and we've got four pins there so let's see oh right there's no label I'll have to find out what they are but from memory oh no not from memory actually I can see there the two middle pins are tied together so it will be um, 
you know, it'll be VCC, ground and out. Um, right, so anyway, let's carry on and I'm going to show you how to wire them up to start with, okay? Okay, so it's really simple to wire up. So we've got data, VCC and ground. And I, here I've got data to D2, I've got VCC to 5 volts on the Arduino and ground. So data, VCC and ground and that's all there is to it. Then this one is the receiver. We've got VCC to 5 volts, then we've got data, and then we've got another data, and then we've got ground. So you see this data here. Um, let me just push this in one second. VCC, data, data, and ground. So I'll push that in. This data pin here, which goes to D2, can actually go to either of the two middle pins. So it can go to, you know, the second or the third pin, it doesn't matter. And, um, and that's it. That's all the wiring complete. And I suppose that's why this is a really popular module, because it's really easy to work with. Anyway, so there's the wire up complete. Let's go over to the code now. Okay, so we need to go to a website, and be careful with the spelling. It's S-P-A-Y-C-E. And, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for this guy making this library, because without these people making the libraries, we'd really be struggling. We'd have to make our own libraries, and it would be so time-consuming. So yeah, it's great that we've got experts here to write these libraries for us, and especially that they provide them free of charge. So if you can support them, then please do. Anyway, so we need to click on this link here, and it will download a zip library. And the zip library will help us greatly in uh, getting these little um, transmitter and receiver pairs to work. Anyway, so when it's downloaded, copy the link location that it's saved to in your computer system and then go to sketch so go to Arduino go to sketch and then go to include library and then go to add zip library and then this thing will come up paste in wherever it is and then click open um, what you will notice here what you should notice is that it will import the library and it will save the files it will do everything it needs to do so in my case it says a library name that already exists and that's because it does exist because I've already done this but anyway when that's done, go to File, and then Examples, and then go down here, and look for Radiohead. Then with these particular modules, they are ASK modules. And if I, if I remember rightly, that means Amplitude Shift Keying. Um, it's a way of um, being able to uh, work with modulation, basically. It's, the way, it's to do with the way the links are modulated in order to uh, receive data. Anyway, so we need to go to Receiver and Transmitter, so I'll go to Transmitter. And now, it's a little bit weird, but it's better to open up Arduino again, and I'll explain why in a second. But open up Arduino again, and then open the receiver in the same way. So I'm just going to push this to the side. So, Examples, and then we'll go to... Oh, here it is, actually. So, Examples, go down, and we want the receiver this time so let's close all these off um, and now it's gonna go right there we go and now we've got the code for the transmitter and the receiver right okay so to start with let's get rid of that let's get rid of that let's keep it simple we need to get rid of that line and we need to get rid of that line that's because it's too generic to make uh, to make our module work we want to uncomment this one here and this 2000 is to do with the speed we're not going to mess with it then here you can see receive transmit push to talk and here's the same receive transmit push to talk but on the transmitter um, we've got here receive on pin 2 transmit on pin 4 well that's not going to work we've wired both the transmitter and the receiver to pin 2 and therefore we're going to change that to 2 and we'll change that to 4 but remember that we're not actually going to receive anything with the transmitter of course um, right now this ESP8266 this isn't for the ESP8266 so I'm going to delete that this is for Arduino um, so we'll change this 115200 because that's what I'm used to now over here what's going on we've got const char pointer message equals hello so what's going on here const means it's a variable which doesn't change char means that the variable type is is a character um, 
pointer means it's not an actual variable, it's a pointer to a variable. Message is of course the name of the pointer and hello means uh, basically put this value into a variable to which the pointer points to. Uh, it's unnecessarily complicated in my opinion, but anyway, that's what's going on. So it's creating a variable, it's creating a pointer, and it's pointing the pointer to the variable. Anyway, and then over here, driver send, so this is where it interacts with the library. It says u int 8t, which means unsigned int 8-bit, uh, which basically that means byte, so that means it's a byte, and then a pointer, so that's, this is some sort of casting by the look of it, and it's getting message, and it's casting it into uh, bytes, essentially, so it gets that, it casts it into bytes, and then it sends it to the driver, and the driver deals with it. So, strlen, so that's getting the length of uh, this uh, character uh, array, if you like. And it's sending it, and then wait packet sent, which is something to do with the library. I don't know exactly what it does. And then we've got a delay of 200 milliseconds. Okay, so basically, get the word hello and transmit it every 200 milliseconds. Okay? Then, whoops, hang on. Then the receiver, let's just get rid of this. The receiver, what this is doing is u int 8t, which is unsigned in 8, which is basically byte, uh, byte array, it's saying here. Um, and we're calling it buffer and it's getting the maximum message length so basically it's making an array of the maximum length which the library can uh, return and that array is an array of bytes and then it's saying um, we want a byte uh, which is the size of the buffer so in other words get the size of the buffer then we're saying if the library is receiving then uh, put its contents into buffer and means get the address of so I don't know exactly what that's doing there it's something to do with the library however it doesn't really matter then int i uh, why does it say int i uh, I don't know why it's saying int i that doesn't make sense so we're going to comment that out this is just generic code isn't it so I don't really know 100% of what's going on here then it says message with a good checksum received dump it so it's saying driver print buffer got buff which is the contents of what it's received and buff len that's the amount of uh, characters presumably or bytes uh, which it's received so anyway what we're going to do now is flash both of these to the two arduinos so i've plugged in the transmitter already so i'm going to go to tools port and it's obviously com 14. now um before i said to open this in two windows and the reason why I said to open it in two windows is because if you do open it in two windows, you get to use two COM ports. Whereas you open it in, in, in one instance, if you like, if you try and change the COM port on here, it changes the COM port on this one. Anyway, so that's why we have it open in two different windows. So, um, Control and U will effectively flash it over to the transmitter. And while it's doing that, I'll uh, plug the receiver in too. Okay, so the receiver's plugged in too, and now I should be able to choose the other port. So, uh, that one's COM14, so this is obviously COM13. And um, this is the code for the receiver, of course. So, I should be able to flash that as well. I don't know if you can flash two at once. Um, I'll give it a go and see what happens. Okay, you can actually flash them both at the same time. Anyway, so um, what's going on here? So we're sending, we've got the hello message. And what is, is happening here really is it's getting the chars. It's converting the chars into bytes. And the reason we can do it is because each of these letters are assigned a unique uh, number, a byte number, according to the ASCII key code. So H might be a certain number, E will be another number. And each one of these can be represented with one single byte. Anyway, so they're converted to bytes over here, uh, according to a TASCII key code, and then they're transmitted. Alright, so, uh, they're transmitted as bits, of course, and then the bits are built into bytes, and then the bytes come over here, and over here, something very simple is going on. Basically, the library is getting the bytes, the raw bytes, and, um, and showing you them as hex. They're showing you in the hex form. They could show you in the, the byte form, 
uh, but whoever's created this library has decided that they're going to show you in hex form. So anyway, this is basically the hex code for the uh, letter uh, which this represents in the ASCII key code. So all we have to do is convert them back into letters, just like it was easy, um, and we don't actually have to convert it. Um, we can get the code here to do that for us. So what we have to do is we'll say uh, for int i equals zero, i is less than, oops, i is less than buff len. So we're saying from zero to the length of the buffer, um, i plus plus, which means keep going through. What we want to do is, well, we need a string over here. Uh, so string, let's say receive. We want to say, for every character that's in here, store the character in string and add to it. So, um, so receive plus equals, which means add to it. Um, buff, which is the array of characters, if you like. And that needs to be i. So, uh, iterate through the whole buffer each time, get a character and put it into string and add it to the existing variable. So, um, all right, there's another thing we need to do actually. Um, we are probably going to need to cast it as a character. So let's upload that and hopefully it will work. Okay, let's see. Oh, it didn't work. And you know why? It's because I forgot to do a serial println. So serial println receive upload and now it should work perfectly done uploading and there we go so it says hello 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 blah 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 and now if I change this over here um, let's say hello my name is Anthony hello my name is Anthony then upload that this will stop receiving for a minute and then as soon as this is uploaded and starts sending that message, then this should receive the new message. Uploading. Come on. Done. Right, here we go. Hello, my name is Anthony. Look at all that there. Anyway, um, that's a very simple and very quick uh, introduction, if you like, and how to get start with, started with these uh, 433 megahertz, very cheap RF links. So hopefully in this video you've learned how to wire them up, you've learned a little bit about the links themselves, you've learned how to get the library or get a library that works, how the library works very briefly and then how to manipulate it and how to convert um, the hex uh, return value back into strings. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Bye.